So we have I U U Schwa. Can you imagine what I would be capable of? I have like six monitors up here. Okay, that was easy. So it is turning into a speed run. The sun has been shining. So the sun will shine tomorrow. The sun shines brightly. I am going to need, I think, a bit more time to absorb this. YouTube? Is that you? YouTube. I gotta show you this. We've been working on Lena Thylef again. We've been trying to translate some sentences. I meant it to be a speed run. I've only gotten through two so far. Let's see how much we can do in this video. All right, let's go in. Let's, let's, ooh, back to the side webcam. So here are our two sentences so far. Mas mazlach and mas mazlagofli. Uh, now we need to talk more about uh, suns shining and all that good jazz. So number three, ooh. Ooh, I didn't know about that. It's a nice website. Okay, sorry. Don't get distracted, Colin. Eyes on the prize. The sun shone. Number three, the sun shone. So are we, do we have tense barking in this language? I believe we do. I believe we do. In fact, I know that we do because... We have our grammar here, and we have the past form of the verb. Oh no, this is Eustamia, what am I doing? We have the proto-language grammar. We have the past form of the verb, which is this t suffix. So that means that we have the ability to say shine past and call it a day. So we know that mas is sun, and we know that mazlach is the verb to shine, but what form does the past have? Well, we can just look. Mazlachet. So we just fill in the blanks. Mas mazlachet. And that's that. Okay. That was easy. Okay, we're picking up the pace now. This is great. The sun will shine. This is really putting the uh, tense and aspect system of the language through its paces. And to be uh, totally honest, I haven't thought a great deal about that. So this is a great opportunity for us to, to look at that. The sun will shine. Now we do not have a future, um, an explicit future tense marker. We do have the presumptive verb form, which corresponds to um, meanings like let's, let's do something uh, like a hortative or a um, something like the adverbial meaning of probably. It also has this intend to meaning. So I could imagine this becoming um, semantically, well, I think fu future is encoded in this already, but I can see it being semantically bleached into Linodilef, in Linodilef as just a future marker, and then there are other ways of saying let's or probably. Maybe that's something we want to explore. So let's look at what the form would be. So sun, shine, and we'll just call it um, presumptive, yeah. We may just retcon, no, not retcon, but we may say that this is a, a future um, at some point, but I think this is the best tool that we have to express that meaning. So let's take a look at our, bum, 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 where is it, our worksheet. And presumptive is muslagosh, muslagosh. Sentences, mas, maslarish, and there we go. Okay, that was easy. So it is turning into a speed run. What you got for us next? The sun has been shining. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I see Sutton's coming up with some, some interesting stuff about this, uh, this construction. 
I am going to need, I think, a bit more time to uh, to absorb this. Um, maybe uh, maybe you could write something up about it on Discord, sort of like a if you have time, if you have a chance, um, and then I can take a look at it when I'm not my focus isn't split across uh, a few different things. Looks interesting though, deriving a, a gnomic and encoded distinction by case alternation. That sounds like fun. Um, gnomic uh, means talking about general truths like uh, things like proverbs, like birds of a feather flock together. That use of the present is called the, the gnomic uh, present in English, at least. Uh, other languages use different forms for that. And uh, encoative is referring to situations where the verb is beginning, something starting to happen. So um, you can think of it as, as starting to X. See, I'm trying to do that thing where I define the technical terms as they come up. For those who are watching along and have no idea what, uh, what I'm saying. Okay, so then the sun has been shining. So this kind of, this kind of perfect, this is the English perfect, um, has been, perfect progressive. Um, and let's, let's focus on this perfect, the, the meaning is sort of um, past action with continued relevance to the present. Um, this seems like something that I don't really care about <laughs> for Lena Thyleff. Um, so maybe what we can do is express this as a express this more or less as the sun was shining rather than the sun has been shining and we can just instead of having go pred we have go past and say the sun was shining all right what are you doing to me so we need to find what the past tense of Li is, and it's leet. Mas, mas, maslo, mas, maslo, fleet. Works, I think. All right, we got a nice paradigm here. What else are we going to do? Can you imagine what I would what I would be capable of if I had like six monitors up here. This would be amazing. Uh, that's leet. I agree. The sun is shining again. So this is sort of getting it, if we're grammaticalizing this notion of again, we are not. So let's get our, the sun is shining and just makes, uh, make it a, an adverb meaning again. I think that's the best way to do it. And since we're becoming more of an SOV language, or sorry, SVO language, I don't feel such a, a need to stick all of these modifiers before uh, the verb. I'd have to revisit um, the word order correlations to see if there's anything in particular about um, these kinds of adverbials and, and where they should sit in this kind of transitional language like the Nathalie that's somewhat SVO, somewhat SOV. But let's uh, let's explore a few options and see what feels right. Sometimes that's just the best way to start. So we need a word for again. And I don't think we have one. That is not anything. Again, no. Do we have something like n new? No. Okay, so I think we just need a new root. Um, so what are we gonna do? Let's come up with a new root. Uh, what's what what what, what 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 do we have in this language? We have f. We could do something like balane again. Just, just put it there and see what it comes out as. 
probably just fallen. Oh no, no, right, we have some fun stuff going on here. We have the front vowels mutating, and we have F uh, debucalizing. Yeah, okay, I'm into this. Hylan. And I think I want this before the verb. Mas Hylan mas lagofli. The proto word structure. Um, let's see if we can get some. So we actually don't have the proto languages phonology written out anywhere, which we really should. Um, but basically, it's um, CV, rigid CV structure. Vowels are a, e, i, o, u, schwa. Uh, I'm going to write down on my to do list come up with a little chart for this so that I can show it in the videos. But basically what it looks like is protogrammer. Let's see if we can find a spot. We don't need that anymore. So we have I U U schwa. So those are our vowels. Nope. What the heck is happening? Oh, I hate, I really detest working on Windows machines. Soon, that will be over. All these shortcuts that do things that I've never... Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm bad at this. <laughs> Where on earth did it go? Okay, here we go. Vowels, consonants. And so we can sort of work backwards from the Lenadilif. I'm just going to do this now because I think we need it. Um, or sorry, from the Eustamia... The Estamia grammar. That's better. Protocol. There we go. So instead of these uvulars, we have labialized velars that become the uvulars. I did see this in the index diachronica for one language, so. And then this, we have the five vowels, actually we have a six vowel system. And the syllable structure is CV. And there's also a constraint that says morphemes must have fewer than four syllables. And that's it. That's the phonology of um, protocol. Okay, I love this Highland. This is cool. Let's see what the list has for us next. The sun will shine tomorrow. Ah, oh, my voice. I don't know. I think it's allergy season or something. It's just a bit, bit tough. So let's go back to our future. And again, I think the list is trying to figure out whether we're doing any uh, anything about obligatory tense marking. In this case, we do have obligatory tense marking, I think. We just need a word for tomorrow. Oops. So this looks like present. <laughs> I don't know, how can we... presumptive like that? And you can't see anything. Apologies. Um... Yeah, so mas maslagish. We just need a word for tomorrow. I doubt we have anything like that. Proto lexicon, but do we have a word like morning? That's often a way of getting tomorrow. Nope. All right, well, let's just coin a new root. Go back to the grammar. What can we come up with? Chat, help me. If you if you would like a um, if you have a word an idea for a word for tomorrow, which could also mean morning, it's a common polysemy. Uh, just dump it in the chat, and we'll we'll put something in. Protopite of tpi. Yes. Okay. You found it in in index diachronica. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, I was just sort of casting about for for a way to get uvulars, and uh, that was 
something I found. I thought that's a bit strange, but let's go with it. Pachotu. Okay, let's make pachotu the word for tomorrow. And let's make it the word for morning as well, because I like that. Protolexicon, pachotu, morning, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, pachotu. And let's do some sound changes. Oops, again, misclicks. It's a good thing I'm not a... Oh. Företh. 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 Yeah, okay. Företh. So we have Mas Firth Maslarush. Yeah, my voice is running out of steam here. See how much more I can do. I like that one. Okay, the sun shines brightly. Isn't that a quote from Mr. Blue Sky by Yellow? That might be a niche reference. Anyway, so the sun shines brightly. Let's go back to our the sun shines as our base. And that's a good song, isn't it? I'm going to listen to that later. That whole album, Out of the Blue, is a very good, very good album. Okay, so I think we need something like I think we're going to put these beforehand. This is just the thing that looks, feels right to me. We have a word for bright. It's going to look a lot like sun, shine, and sun and shine, but they're all, they're all morphologically related. Um, and let's, yeah, we can use, we can use Masala again. This is one of these things that makes sense in English, but doesn't really make sense to say in this language. It's like the sun shines in a shining manner. Um, but it seems a bit redundant. But let's just go with it for now. Uh, do we have a verb form that we can press into service as in this way? Hmm, I don't think so. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at, I'm going to take a look at some grammaticalization, excuse me. And let's see some fine sources of manner adverbials. Manner adverbials. Committative and instrument. Okay, so we can use, we can do something like nominalizing this verb and then using an instrumental uh, marker on it. I think that's what we'll do. So we need then the, what do we need? So we're going to need the substantive form, mushle, mus, musle, rock. Actually, let's go back to the proto-language and do it there and then see if we can just fuse the, the ending together as a manner adverbial marker. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the proto-grammar. Let's... So we need masala. Right? Come on, give me a, someone give me a schwa. So then we need the substantive masa lacha qua, and then we go over here to the noun form generator, 
masa lecha kwamu. And that is what we are going to use, maybe. Okay. Ich mazlich. So we may actually give ourselves a, um, oops, you can't see that. A way of forming manner adverbials and it's going to look like ugh, I think so it's going to take this substantive and it's going to basically just fricativize it spirantize it so it looks like this. It's a blue form, so a B stem. There we go. So then we, we could predict that the, the A stem would have something like Sabanech. Uh, the A stem would have something like um, ten, ten loch, something like that. I'd have to go through it, but I think that's the general gist. So this is this is good. So if we wanted to use this form, I see that there's some nice alternatives in the chat, which I will return to shortly. But we could use something like mas, maslich, maslach. So. Oops, off screen there, sorry. Um, yeah, okay, so that's good. Feel free, feel free, use it, use it. I, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's your idea. <laughs> oh, uh, are, we get, are we getting Arabic vibes? That's really cool. The sun shines a bright shining. Oh yeah. I have seen this in, um, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have seen this in the Semitic component of Yiddish um, occasionally. Cool. Uh, I do not know a, a ton about Semitic whatsoever. I know very little, but that is something that I recall hearing about. So if we wanted to use that structure, how would we do it? So we would use the sun shines and then the sun shines a great shining. Do we have anything like great? Or where's our lexicon? Or big? Okay, I think we need a... Um, a morpheme for a great or big. So if the chat has any thoughts, I'm all ears. I'm going to bring us back to the phonology. There we go. Hopefully relatively short. And then I'll put in the So the sun shines a great shining. Ka, muwo. Okay, I'm going to put both of those down. Let's see what happens with ka. Because that is nice and short. And Mita, sorry, I know I'm not getting all of them. Suit, suit, we don't have long vowels in the proto language, but we could do something like suhut, which would give us the same thing. Um, 
Bayek. We can't do Bayek because we don't have we don't have vowels in hiatus and we don't have closed syllables, unfortunately. Um, all right, I'm gonna take all of these. Let's see what happens with ka. Big, great, and we'll use the other roots for other things that come up. So let's go back to our grammar. Let's go. Let's go back to our verb form generator. Ka. Maybe we're gonna want this one to be a dynamic verb, but for now, let's just use it as a, a static verb. If that means nothing to you, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's a protocol called deep cut. Oh yeah, you're right. Suhud also needs something else. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, this is great. So we have ka, and we need to look at the worksheet to see what which form is the attributive. It's the one that is an s, so kas. Perfect. And then there's one more thing we need to do. We need to put the uh, we need to put this nominalized form into the accusative case. So sentences, mas, mazlach, kas. And then the shining is mazlok, but we need to put it into the accusative case. What is our accusative marker? I feel like for nominalizations, we're probably going to want to put them into some sort of a regular class rather than um, doing all sorts of stress shifts. Often you will get um, a situation where if you do have derivational morphology that changes the word class of a noun, um, that's kind of like a boundary for, that can be a boundary for um, the application of, of um, what's it called? phonological operations so you know you wouldn't necessarily ha expect to see alternations that you essentially what happens is you freeze the form and then do the derivation and so i think we'll we'll take that um approach here not always but it, it can happen uh okay so where were we i was going to make an accusative so I need to look at our A stem accusatives. So we're going to make all nominalizations A stems because um, I think this is going to be our regular form. And the accusative is oich. So then we have then we have something like Mas maslach kas mesle kuch. Mas maslach kas mesle kuch. So that's how if we wanted to do it in this kind of in the Arabic way. Um, yes. Okay. Let me just return to that uh, proto lexicon. Thank you, chat, for keeping me following my own rules. So instead of suhut, we'd have suhut. Uh, Um, okay, I think, I think I'm going to put in a cut here and then we'll just do maybe just a little chat afterwards. Cause I don't know how much longer I can speak for. I gotta, I gotta do the things that, that they tell me to do. Everyone, well, not everyone. Some people tell me there are ways to avoid getting, uh, your voice tired when speaking for a long time. And I need to, I need to work on those. All right. So let's say goodbye to YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Look at what we've done. We've come up with a, a bunch of new sentences and we've come up with a bunch of uh, kind of cool, kind of cool grammatical structures and so new vocabulary. This is the, this is, this is the day to day, you know, this is how it goes with Conlang. So I'm very glad you could join us for it. Come back and see some more when we got it available and it'll be coming to you soon. Uh, I don't have any doubt of that. So until next time, uh, what's, what's my freeze frame going to be? <laughs>